How's it going everybody? I'm going to be showing you a budget Demir ninja deck. This deck uses Eureka with the Tiger Shadow as the commander. Whenever a ninja deals combat damage to a player, we're going to reveal the top card of our library and put that card into our hand. Then each opponent loses life equals that card's converted mana cost. This card helps us generate a lot of card draw and we do play a lot of ninjas in the deck so it can trigger multiple times. The card is a little expensive at $8 but it absolutely is needed for this deck. A brief summary of this deck is we're going to be playing with really cheap unblockable creatures. Then we're going to swap those creatures out with ninjas with the ninjutsu ability. This is how we're going to generate some advantage as well as play around some sort of removal. This deck is definitely more fast and aggressive. We're not looking to play for a long game. We also do play some cheap counter spells as well as some removal. Each of these ninjas are going to allow us to draw a card when it deals combat damage to a player. Next up, the Nezamine Prowler. When it enters the battlefield, a target creature we control is going to gain Death Touch and Life Link. And when Skull Snatcher deals combat damage to a player, we're going to exile up the two cards in that player's graveyard. When Thousand Face Shadows cast first Nujinsu cost, we're going to create a copy of another attacking creature. That token will also be tapped and attacking. This creates some really big potential board swing and potentially a lot of card advantage because we're going to be targeting another ninja, which will help us either draw more cards or generate even more advantage. Whenever Mistblade Shinobu deals combat damage to a player, we're going to bounce one creature that player controls and put it to its hand. Whenever Fallen Shinobu deals combat damage to a player, that player is going to exit the top two cards of the library. Until the end of this turn, we may pay those cards without paying their mana costs. This card can be absolutely devastating for our opponent. When Miss Syndicate deals combat damage to a player, we're going to create a token that's a copy of this card. And Silent Ability to Oni is a little expensive with the converted mana cost, however, this is more on the top end. And if we do end up getting this card off, it's going to be pretty lethal for our opponent. Whenever this deals combat damage to a player, we're going to look at that player's hand and we can play one of their cards in our hands without paying its mana cost. It's also a pretty big creature with 6 power and 5 toughness. Moving on to some unblockable creatures, both channeling outcast and tormented soul can't be blocked channeling outcast is also a shapeshifter so it is also a ninja thieves guild enforcer can be blocked however if our opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard this is going to get plus two plus one and it has death touch it also has flash even though it can be blocked it's still a card that your opponent is probably not going to want to block because of the death touch looter has shadow so it can only be blocked with other creatures that have shadow and whenever it does combat damage to an opponent we get to draw a card and discard a card and both the mist cloaked herald and slither blade can't be blocked tetsuko is going to make creatures we control with power or toughness less than one one unblockable. The Invisible Stalker is really awesome because it has hexproof and it can't be blocked. It makes it pretty hard for opponents to deal with. Demir Infiltrator can't be blocked and we can also cast it for its transmute cost. That gives us the ability to search our deck with a card at convert a mana cost of 2. So we can search out a card like Invisible Stalker or Tetsuko. All these three cards can be blocked, however they do have flying and they are very cheap. Really early on in the game, these could be almost considered as unblockable. We can also sacrifice a Storm Tamer to counter something their opponent is using to target one of our creatures. And the Spectral Seller can help us draw cards and it has flash. Some nice artifacts worth considering. Quietus Spikes gonna give our creature Death Touch. And whenever equipped creature does combat damage to a player, that player loses half of their life rounded up. We can easily equip this with one of our unblockable creatures. This will really easily whittle down our opponent's life. Swift Whip Boots is nice, giving our creature not only hexproof but also haste. Definitely would consider adding both of these to your deck. When we cast Arcane Adaptation and call Ninja, all of our creatures we control will be ninjas in addition to their other types. Even if they're in the graveyard or in our library, this is again great for our commander because every time a ninja deals combat damage to a player, we're basically going to draw a card and make our opponents lose life. Smoke Shroud's a nice enchantment, it's going to give our creatures plus one plus one of flying, and whenever a ninja enters the battlefield under control, we're going to return this card from our graveyard to the battlefield attached to that creature. Aqueous Form is nice because for one mana enchanted creature can't be blocked, and whenever the creature attacks, we're going to scry one. Sage Owl is another flying card that could potentially be unblockable early in the game, but also when it enters the battlefield, we're going to rearrange the top four cards of the library. Notion Thief is pretty cool because if an opponent would draw a card except the first one they draw each turn, that player would skip that draw and then we get to draw a card instead. Kind of a nice way to prevent our opponents from drawing extra stuff. Baleful Strix is fitting because that's flying and death touch and we also get to draw a card off of it. Our opponents can block this, however, they're most likely not going to want to. Mizium Skin is going to make our creature gain hexproof. We can also overload it for one extra mana, which is nice. Diabolic Tutor is going to help us search for the card that we need. And on Earth is a cheap way of getting one of our creatures back from the grave. Op, Thought Scour, and Brainstorm are going to allow us to draw some cards. Preordain, Ponder, and Gitaxian Probe will also help us draw some cards. Gitaxian Probe is also really useful because we get to see our opponent's hand. Again, one thing with the ninja deck is we want to be a little more surprising and more picky with when we play our ninjas. We don't want to play them into removal spells, so gaining information about what our opponent has in their hand is going to be quite critical. Both Treasure Crews and Read the Bones are going to help us draw even more cards. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to a player, both of these cards are going to allow us to draw a card. Grazilax also says whenever a creature we control becomes blocked, we may return that to our hand. This is kind of good because oftentimes we want our ninjas in our hand, not on the battlefield where they're open to removal. Go for the throat and murderous cut or some nice removal spells. A card like Royal Assassin in this deck I think is quite fitting. Because most of our creatures are going to be unblockable, it's going to be quite fitting for our opponent to want to attack. As long as a creature is tapped, Royal Assassin is going to be able to destroy that creature. We can essentially do this every untap step. It is a little expensive, however I think the benefit is there. Hero's Downfall and Never Return are going to allow us to destroy creatures or planeswalkers. 
and Etherize and Blink of an Eye are going to allow us to return creatures back to the hand. We can also cast these cards on ourselves in order to return our ninjas back to our hand, just to keep them off the battlefield. Moving on to some counter spells. Counter spell and dispel are some options. We're also running cards like Negate and Mana Leak. Demir Charm, Perplex, and Drown and Lock can counter spells. Demir Charm is a little bit more versatile with what it can do. Perplex can also be casted for its transmute cost, so we're going to be able to find something in our library with the converted mana cost of 3 and add it to our hand. And Drown and the Lock can also be used as a removal card. Both of these cards are going to allow us to get some extra mana ramping and are just good artifacts to run really in any commander deck. We're running all three artifact mana rocks. The talisman's a little expensive, but it's really good. Essentially, this card only costs one mana because we can tap this artifact the turn that we play it. But you definitely want to make sure you're hitting your colors, especially in a fast aggro deck like this. Arcane Signet and Command Sphere are going to also help filter our mana. Moving on to some lands. All these lands are going to allow us to add blue or black to our mana pool. I would try to run as many Demir lands as possible, even though some do enter the battlefield tapped. Both River of Tears and Choked Estuary are other Demir lands. Barrenmore and Lonely Sandbar can be cycled in hopes that we're going to be drawing a more useful card. When Mystic Sanctuary enters the battlefield, we could put an instant or sorcery card from our graveyard and put it on our library. And when Holomar Depths enters the battlefield, we can look at the top three cards of the library and put them back in any order. We're obviously running the Command Tower, and Rose Passage will allow us to make any of our creatures unblockable this turn. Then we're running 9 Swamps and then 13 Islands. I think this deck could be a lot of fun, There's just some things you could probably consider. Your opponent's not going to be able to block any of your creatures, so the main way they're going to be dealing with it is with removal. You might want to wait a turn or two for your opponent to be tapped out before you decide to go all in with some of your ninjas. When you cast the cards for its ninjutsu cost, they're a lot less than what the normal creature usually is, and the value you're getting out of it is a lot greater. So at the same time, you want to find a balance between aggressive and aggro and being patient and timely. Let me know some cards I missed down below that you should probably add to this deck. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.